Well, I said to my hubby I was going to wing it and um, luckily he said I think you should write a few things down. <laughs> so, uh, yes, well, um, I've, I've been a practising visual artist for roughly 11 years. Um, I'm still teaching part-time uh, at high school at Cavendish Road State High Art. Um, and I've just recently dipped my big toe into the world of fashion with uh, the silk kimono. So I love fashion and what I find is that the women that I create, um, I started experimenting wearing them because it feels like they're family and sort of avatar selves, women I'd like to meet, family. So um, that next step into fashion seemed really um, an easy, organic step, uh, plus I get to keep them too, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so basically tonight, um, I just want to talk about my journey back to being creative, because uh, for many years I, I stopped being creative. Um, and then I want to talk about, do a sales job, about the benefits of um, living a creative life. And um, then I'll open it out, pass on any hints and tips and tricks I can to you. But um, basically, I'm still on the journey. You just never get it done. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's a side of me that goes, yeah, but you've got so much more to do. So why are you talking about it now? You know, so you never feel 100% ready because there's always the next thing. Um, but yes, so here we go. <laughs> Right. I hope um, tonight that what I can say to you is ease you, really. Um, at first, when I first got back into being creative, I, I just wanted somebody to say, everything's going to be okay and um, great things are on the radar for you and um, follow your bliss and uh, go easy on yourself, spend a day in your PJs, you know, and allow the quiet whispers of creativity to um, engage you and, and connect with you again, which we all have, I think, when we're kids and then we sort of somehow lose it along the way. So, right, next page. <laughs> okay, my gorgeous husband George is over here, so my techno genius. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, rule number one, get a George. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, this is me, bad, bad 90s eyebrows, as you can see, this is me. <laughs> this is me at uni. So I went straight from high school in, at, into QCA doing a fine art degree, which was just a mind blow. I went to an all-girls Catholic school. I was really, you know, believed in Santa Claus until probably year eight. So I was really sheltered. Um, and then you beauty <laughs> went to art college. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the pub's only a stone throw away and nobody checks if you're at lectures. It was fantastic. Failed quite a few subjects and just didn't rock up. Um, but I did start um, a lot of experimentation in, in art college. So I, I did crazy things like cover a bike in... Um, clay and wrap it in wire and stick it in the kiln. I, I cut up sex dolls, put them into baking trays, put resin in them, put them in a, a shopping cabinet. Like, <laughs> nuts. <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was, a, it, it was a fun time for experimentation, but I was really, because I was so young, um, I wasn't really sure of myself or, or what I wanted to say. And I was just looking for things to appease my lecturers. <laughs> and um, yeah, and the, the critiquing process was really harsh. So that harsh process led to me taking a year's um, deferment of my degree. And I worked in a bakery. And that was enough for a year to get me back into uni. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to be doing this for the rest of my life. <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, finished the degree. But then at the end of that, 
uh, felt a little bit lost with a fine art degree and um, the thinking that I didn't fit the creative mould. I, I basically thought I didn't suffer enough, I wasn't interesting enough to, to have a voice. So, um, and I wanted a really good life. I just wanted, you know, to travel and fall in love and have a house and um, do these things that I thought being an artist meant you, you couldn't do. So, um, yeah, so, next slide, gorgeous one, thank you. Um, have a little sip of water. Yeah, so basically there were dolls that I created and it felt like um, I was unearthing these archaic beings like from another planet and they were these, uh, yeah, doll-like forms created a dress out of dolls. Um, the previous slide, the dolls on sticks and I was interacting with them and my university lecturer at the time said, um, the magic happens when you're interacting with them, Sarah. And in a way, my um, women are sort of grown-up versions of these guys. So, um, yeah, so that interaction with them is an important part, that intimacy that, that I have with these um, creative goddesses uh, is an important part of the process too. Okay, right, okay, so fast forward, this is my gorgeous husband George, this is my gorgeous Molly um, that we've just recently, um, yeah, become guardians to, which is just, we, we don't have children but she's it, um, and yeah, these are just some uh, houses that I did in one particular year, but it reminds me to talk about so I went on, got a, a, a Bachelor of um, Education, started teaching in high schools, uh, wasn't practicing at all myself. We just bought a house and uh, newly married and then our lovely neighbours, he's an illustrator, and he said, do you want to get together and talk about art once a week? And have you seen The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron? And and I was very resistant. I said, I'm too busy. I'm you know, working full time. I can't, can't do this, but I will take this book. And reading this book, I highly recommend it. I think I've sold it about a million times. Um, it was like coming out. It was like, oh God, I am creative. <laughs> you know, and it, 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 it was a real uh, realisation that I have to get back to who that little girl was so for me it was um, just bit by bit I only invited people mainly George at that stage in my life to check out what I was doing to reconnect with that creative process and gentle applause is all you need you do not need somebody who uh, comes in and critiques it or rips it apart you're a little um, seedling and you you need encouragement and um, lots of care at that stage when you're starting something new. Um, I like to think now, now that I'm a practicing artist, I have that compassion for the kids that I teach, even though it gets a bit hairy and dicey in year 12, but it, it is, um, yeah, something important to me that I, I can pass on, this is something you know, really important and part of you and a beautiful mark and you know where you're going. I can't step in too much. I can give artists to you, but it's um, important you follow your, your bliss and your path there. So yes, told my husband, mortgage, great timing, want to leave full time um, <laughs> teaching and uh, start, start doing art again. So. I did supply work and that sort of thing um, in the meantime, but it's been an 11 year wonderful journey. So I really encourage it. And that sort of segues me into the sales job <laughs> of um, the unexpected benefits of living a creative life. Um, I think so. <laughs> um, 
Okay, yeah, there's a couple. So you can do it until you're 90. Um, actually, I, I might go to the next slide, sweetie. Mm. I went on this um, artist residency at the, the Tweed uh, River Gallery, Regional Gallery, and of course, if you haven't been, go. It's beautiful. It's got um, a recreation of Margaret Olley, famous Australian artist, her living spaces. So I, I luckily got um, 10 days um, staying there in this beautiful heaven environment and what really impacted me strongly was looking at these recreated spaces of Margaret and that her, her energy was still there. So it felt like I was having a conversation with Margaret just looking at her curation of things and popping things together and this visual feast you know that um, she had and I thought hey that's something I haven't actually considered which is this beautiful creative gift that um, that we have it's something that you can continue to uh, call upon as this secret uh, conversation between yourself and yourself so um, another instance where that was very clear to me my uncle Jack died and at his funeral he was a painter so he had at his funeral uh, this canvas that was laid against his coffin and there was something about this canvas that was so alive and so Jack so there was something captured in there of Jack and I thought wow that means that whatever I paint in this lifetime it's almost like a, a spiritual thing that will just live on you know and I love that um, people can interact with that when I'm dead and gone you know so it's almost like scratching I was here on the planet, you know. So, <laughs> thanks, son. Okay, well, tax deductible trips. Here's another sales <laughs> job. Um, <laughs> yes, I applied for this opportunity to go to Sicily and paint a mural uh, in this little broken down town in Graniti. And, um, just so happens a friend was getting uh, married at the uh, Cinque Terre in Italy. I said, well, that makes sense, let's do it. And so, um, yeah, so it was a really wonderful experience. And again, um, something I would never have thought about if I was just continued doing what I was doing and didn't take the courage to um, start being creative again. It leads you up beautiful garden paths, you know, to places that you never thought you'd go. So I look forward to some more of those and um, look forward to some... There's so many artist residencies too, that's what I want to say to you. It's just everywhere and, um, yeah, it's a world of possibility. Okay, right, well, I'm gonna get serious about finance here too. Um, if, if you're a teacher, there's a predictable amount that you're gonna earn for the rest of your life and you, you go up in increments. Now, with creativity, I feel as if the potential is great, it's greater, um, that there's more. That's not to say that there weren't hairy moments. I mean, at the beginning, I couldn't even pay the car the car off so it uh, at the beginning it's always scary but this whole idea of an artist not being abundant and um, having possibility for bringing abundance to you especially as women um, is nonsense so um, yeah I suppose that's that's what I wanted to say there um, and I'm still working on that. It just feels like it's growing and expanding and, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to read this one. <sighs> well, I just said, look, know thyself as another, as the fourth point for living a creative life and the benefit, the unexpected benefit. Um, these are some of the Bellas here. 
And of course, this is, I think, my avatar with Molly around my neck. Um, so, yeah. Um, look, um, I've put homegrown self-reflective therapy. <laughs> when, when you start creating, I feel like it's um, an unlayering of selves and uh, you get to find parts of yourself or have a relationship with yourself that um, maybe it's the quiet meditation and the conversation that you have with your own creativity. Probably chefs get it, lots of people get it, writers get it. Just in the quiet moment, things, you, you connect with things that you probably have buried or put aside or all of those things. So there's something really lovely about getting to know yourself more and more through creative practice. Um, I've said, I always look at my work like a set of tarot cards. They reveal my past, present and future. They seem to tell me what's going on inside this human flesh suit. Making art has led to a deeper knowledge of self. Uh, to me, my arts practice challenges me to be a bigger version of myself, which I think as women, I think we're trained quite young to be nice and, you know, do the right thing and all of these things. So creativity and embodying the concept of the artist is beautifully rebellious and not always rational and not all, you know, so you can uh, uh, have this freedom in being this version of yourself, which is strong and empowered and it's great. So, um, I think it's Gabriella Garcia. Is that his name? He's, he's an author and he wrote something along the lines of, we are not only born on the day of our birth, but life keeps obliging us to keep birthing ourselves. So there's something that really resonates with me there. Um, I keep discovering aspects of myself bits that are yet to be healed and truly looked at and more and more at peace with who I am. It's a long journey, I'm not there yet, but it is creativity allows me to connect with that whole idea. So do it. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> the teaching though, my accountant father on my, my shoulder says, that's good that you're doing part-time teaching. You know, like, <laughs> so don't give up your day job, but cut it down. And, you know, because I think um, I see sometimes when beautiful artists go, I'm going to give up work. It's going to be beautiful. I'm going to do... And then you have to start trading your artist self for commissions, for trading things. When you earn a little bit of cash with something that you're you've set yourself up with and you previously gifted at lots of graphic designers in the room, that you can uh, freelance that, but at the same time they're not negotiate your artist. Whereas full-time artists do need to negotiate their artists. It's a very small percentage that can live fully on the, the proceeds of that. So I find for me the teaching, I love it and also it's petty cash, <laughs> it comes constantly, it's steady. And then I can say to people, take it or leave it, I'm not gonna starve this week if you don't take it. So there's something really proud about that process as well. So, um, yeah, if I, if I can give, give you advice, I think I attract artists, people who buy my work. Actually, I always say, you're an artist, you're an artist. <laughs> and they go, no, 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 you are. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I really want to say, read Julie Cameron's book. Don't get bogged down by the exercises she gets you to do. Be very easy on yourself. Um, take time to experience life like an artist you know just even you know like I say that there, there were moments that I'd be in the house during that time that I stopped full-time teaching I'm gonna be an artist and I would sleep I must have caught up on so much sleep and I'd be 
out the blinds because I felt like I had no purpose. I had no purpose to do absolutely nothing. It was disgusting. It was like <laughs> worse than taking drugs. I was in my PJs at two o'clock, you know, and poor George would come home. I've said, I've done nothing, absolutely nothing. I haven't got dinner. I haven't cleaned. I've just done nothing. And I think that's a big thing, I think, as creatives, that we're always uh, wanting to do things and it's easier for us to accept. You need to get up at 7.30 every morning. You need to get down to the canvas. I, I'm not that, you know, I'm, I'm completely about the thing is you want to uh, communicate something authentic and to do that you need to stop and listen and enjoy and revel. The Italians do it really well, actually. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, and, and know that it's a marathon. You'll be doing it for the rest of your life. And um, it's fun. It's fun. Makes me happy. A happy artist. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Any questions? <laughs> And a, and a big thanks to the beautiful familiar faces that are here tonight and also um, the lovely faces I haven't spoken to yet and to my lovely husband George and uh, to the beautiful uh, wine design ladies that have organised tonight. It's just wonderful. I was chickening out earlier today. I was going, why have I said yes? 